All right. Good afternoon and welcome to our weekly assembly. This morning we have the pleasure of hearing from three more of our eighth graders. We will start with uh, Danielle Parchment, the, no, with Cody Strauss first, then Danielle Parchment, and then we will finish with, we'll figure out the order when I get it straight, <laughs> and then we'll finish. And then Merck Chamonu. Okay. We'll figure out the order later. <laughs> anyway, let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and Dylan is going to lead us. Come on up, Dylan. Assembly stand. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dylan. <clears throat> you may be seated. So who's going first? Mirksha? Okay, our first speaker this morning is Mirksha Manutz. Give him a round of applause. Nothing and no one is perfect. It just takes a good eye to find those hidden imperfections. Daphne Delacroix. Good, af oh. good afternoon, Dr. Joel, Mrs. Lyons, Mr. Creevel, faculty, staff, and my fellow students. I really love this quote. It may be a quote that I didn't really know of before today, but I still really love it. Why, you may ask. Well, because it is so very true. This quote applies, applies to all people, and this includes me. As an eighth grader who plans on attending a private high school after my final year at Buckley, I have a responsibility of performing well on my standardized tests. I'm enrolled in a program where each week on Sundays, I log into a Zoom meeting and take a practice test. Each week, I submit my answers, uh, I submit my answers and look at my results, hoping to see any improvement. My first time submitting was a couple weeks ago. When I saw my score, to be honest, I wasn't very pleased. I'd gotten a low score of 110 out of 150 on my practice test. Of course, I realized it wouldn't be right to harp on myself about this. However, I'm usually very competitive and harsh on myself when it, whenever I underperform on something. Although I, rece although I received mediocre results, I also took notice that I'm in fact human. What I mean by this is that humans aren't meant to ace everything they will do on their first try. Heck, I know some people that can't even ace things after their fifth, sixth, or even 9,000th try. This statement includes me and my imperfections, such as not even being able to remind myself to properly and fold and put away my clothes. But my point is that our imperfections are what keep us human and what separate us from being zombified robots. Although I think Mr. Klaus would beg to differ. Our mistakes and our problems are what allow us to be humane, functioning people. Mistakes happen all the time in the world. This definitely wasn't one of them. Last May, my soccer team qualified in our division to go to the New York State Finals. This was big for us. We had gone through a long and perilous journey to get to where we were, and we weren't planning on losing anytime soon. When the time came to play, unfortunately, we started off the game weekly, making mistakes left and right, giving up the ball, or passing, passing poorly to one another. By the end of the half, we had conceded two goals due to our mistakes and bad decisions. We wanted to win that game so badly we went back out there like a pack of hungry dogs, hunting for the ball, hunting for goals. We equalized the game in the second half, making it two to two, sending us to extra time. The only reason we were able to put ourselves back in it was because we knew how to fix our mistakes and imperfections accordingly so that we could have better imperfections. I know, right? How weird does it sound to want to have better imperfections? One normally would wish they were perfect. However, understand this. We can use flaws to learn and gain experience in life. Regardless of what the final score was, or regardless of who won that golden trophy, our whole team grew a bit that day, as people. We ended up being the runner-ups in the league, but we worked hard, gave it what we had, and learned a little bit about life that day. Our flaws taught us all, all lessons, and they will continue to do so throughout our lives. I'm not, sure, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do in my life yet. The good thing is I don't need to make that decision for a very long time. When I was younger, I always wanted to be a professional soccer player. I loved it, whether it was watching it or playing it, and I still do. However, I'll admit that I never, that I never was naturally or genetically prone to running a lot in short distances. It was never easy for me to run a lot quickly and, and intensely. 
I did as much as I could and put work into it to get better. That has always been a flaw of mine when it comes to soccer. That's an imperfection I need to work on. If I'm not handed something from the start, the only way for me to, the only way for me to strive to it is to chase it down. I need to work harder to become a faster player. I love soccer too much just to give it up and hand it over. And hand it, over. it is one of the few things in my life that I don't think I could live without. I want to become the best I can be when it comes to being a player. I wasn't born the best, and I won't just become the best over time. I need to work for it. My lack of perfect attributes make me want to be better so that I'm closer each and every day to having those abilities that I strive for. No one is ever handed everything from the start. It's the choice of the people to obtain those abilities that they want. Even though I am not the best I can be today, and even though I may not be tomorrow or even the next week, I'm driven to become that best version of myself. All of these experiences can be connected to anything you want them to be. For me, they display how our mistakes, blunders, and flaws make us grow as people, act human-like, and get better at the things we aren't perfectly, we aren't good at yet. Imperfection is a trait that is naturally implemented in all of us humans, and it is what truly separates us from being humans or being robotic. It makes us better at the things we strive to improve in. It teaches us that throughout our lives, it teaches us throughout our lives and gives us our values as people. Without our imperfections, we would be boring and bland. Our flaws are what make us special. Thank you. Thank you, Merksha. And unsurprisingly, Merksha decided to uh, give a special twist to his speech. Usually we talk about how, what makes us good and almost perfect, but you decided to talk about what makes us not perfect and perfect. Uh, and uh, I think that was a great reminder of our imperfections. Makes us human, humane, that makes us who we are. And so great, uh, great message for us this weekend to n continue to nurture our imperfections. Uh, I like that. However, I hope that doesn't become an excuse for not folding your clothes and putting them <laughs> away. But <laughs> that being said, uh, great message. Let's work on our flaws this weekend. I love that. Yeah. So uh, Merkshire is the last, as far as we know, right, of uh, three. <laughs> three Manus to uh, graduate from Buckley, so I wanted to give a special shout out to Anna Maria, class of uh, 2016, and Michael, uh, class of 2014, also his brother. <laughs> I will admit that I think they have set a great example for their little brother, so good job. <laughs> and speaking of setting an example, uh, let's uh, welcome also uh, Mirksha's mom and dad also there. <laughs> So who's Cody? Okay, our next speaker this morning is Cody Strauss. Let's welcome him. Good afternoon, Dr. Joel, Mrs. Lyons, Mr. Kriebel, faculty, staff, and my fellow students. Some people find fishing boring and non-purposeful and tend to quit after five casts. However, I find fishing a way to immerse myself into experiences of life. When you fish, you cannot just go out there unprepared and catch a fish. Just like how you can't go out in life and become successful. You need to be prepared and dedicated. Without those two, it will be very hard to catch a fish, or in a life perspective, get a good job. When I first started fishing, I was super impatient and kept reeling in my line every five minutes. Over time, I learned that patience is key to successful fishing. Fishermen know that one cast does not dictate whether you are good or not. What dictates whether you are good or not is if you, keep, if you give up after one cast with no success. I love the feeling when I have a fish on the hook. It's a feeling I cannot quite explain, but it's between landing the fish and hooking it. In life, NBA players, lawyers, and doctors work hard to be where they are. They do not just wake up and say, I am going to be an NBA player, lawyer, or doctor. They put in hours of work each day. Things do not happen with a snap. You need to really want to pursue your dream. Otherwise, it is only a wish. Some people struggle when it comes to fishing because of the level of patience needed. When I fish, sometimes I will lose patience and just reel in my line. I believe patience is one of the most important things you can learn in life because essentially 
Everything you do in life requires patience. When you fish, you need bait, a rod, and a lure. Fish do not just bite with a wave of a hand. In fishing, you need to come prepared in order to, in order to succeed, as is the same in life. So far, I have learned that life does not come easy without dedication and preparation. Whether it is low tide or the lowest point in your life, you cannot stop trying and just give up. When fishing, if you do not catch anything in 10 minutes, stay vigilant and keep casting. Fish do not bite on every cast, just as success does not come in one try. And if it does, it is not perfected. To be successful, you do not give up on one try. Successful fishermen are the fishermen who keep casting even when it is low tide. Successful fishermen are the fishermen that teach others to fish. If you want to catch a fish, you need to plan the best day to do it when you are prepared with everything you need, to su everything you need so the success rate of catching a fish is high. If you stop trying, that means you give up on a dream, and dreams should not be cast aside so easily. It is not smart to fish for one type of fish. You should always bring a second lure or a second rod that can be used to catch a different fish. You should always be open to the possibility of catching something you were not quite after. Having a wide range of choices and a fallback plan is key to achieving your dreams. Who knows if it will come true, but the climb is half the battle and will help define you as a person. To that end, giving up is like throwing a piece of your life in the trash. Dreams do not come true without meeting some sort of challenge and obstacle. Finally, once you have a grip on that fish and it is on your line, if you let that line slack even a little bit, that gives enough time for the fish to get off. If you attain that dream job and slack off right after you get the job, they will fire you. It is a waste of time if you do not continue with whatever you worked for. In fishing, when you have a fish hooked, if you leave the line slack to do something, that lets the fish get off way easier than if you were vigorously reeling to get that fish in. Whether you apply for a high paying job or a low paying job, if you slack off, that gives them a reason to fire you. You want to give them a reason to promote you. When fishing, once you reel in one fish, does not mean you stop fishing. You go for another one and keep fishing because you know when you catch that fish, you will feel accomplished. Once you attain your dream, if you slack off even once, what was ever the point of going through the pain of getting to where you are? See, in life, most things do not come easily. Some take tolls on your body, others take tolls on your mental health. Both are equally as bad. But the feeling of success is one of the best feelings ever. You feel like there was a purpose for your work. It makes you say, the pain was worth it. When you dedicate yourself to one dream you really want to achieve and you are prepared, you have a very high chance of catching the biggest fish. As Byron Pulsifer once said, dedication is a belief transitioned into action which is transformed into change. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Cody. Uh, well done. First of all, I have to thank you, Cody, because I feel I know a lot more about fishing now than I did five, <laughs> five minutes ago. So I have to thank you for that. But thank you for using uh, fishing as a metaphor to talk about life and your life in particular. And I think it's a passion you picked up from one of your neighborhood uh, friends, right? Which is terrific. And uh, in particular, this concept of uh, patience, right? From the moment you cast, to the moment you actually eat the fish. There's a long journey there, uh, and uh, this was a great reminder that uh, uh, most of that journey is worth the wait, right? Or well, most of the uh, the fish that you get at the end is worth the wait. So um, uh, Cody is a lifer. He's been here 12 years. Actually, he started here as a as a toddler. So uh, let's give him a <laughs> I think the, the values that you talked about in your speech are values that you have exemplified ever since you've been here, right? Uh, patience, most days, okay, patience, <laughs> and, uh, and your dedication uh, to your work here. So congratulations for that, and thank you for a great speech. Well done, very well done, good. <laughs> so, let me introduce the Strauss family. So we have his little brothers, Milo and Aiden. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs>
This healing, that was good. Did the, the hand wave, that was excellent. There we go. <laughs> and uh, let's welcome uh, uh, Cody's mom and dad as well. <laughs> Our last speaker this morning is Danielle Parchment. <laughs> From the pit of adversities to the Everest of strength. Pain, sorrow, hurt, grief has affected my family this year, but the pain that comes at losing a loved one is the hardest pain that a human being can ever endure. Poetry is my creative outlet, but it's the medium through which I express myself, whether happy or sad, and this poem was written during the darkest time of my life. Since your departure, the, tar the stars don't twinkle half as bright. I tend to stay hidden, invisible in the light. Our memories are forgotten, ripped, torn away. Only short clips are playing my mind to this day. Since your departure, I remember standing at the graveyard that day. Words lodged in my throat, forgotten, stored away. I couldn't bear to see your tombstone that day. Grief tore through my soul, still haunted me to this day. Since your departure, others sneered or walked past me when they saw me cry. But they never knew the grief and hurt that was stored up inside. Your warm laugh and hugs bubbled in my mind, knowing that they would soon be forgotten, lost in time. Since your departure, it has been extremely hard, but it has been the hardest for me out of them all. I only have a few more words to say, COVID-19, you will pay. If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you have started. Marcus Garvey, Jamaican activist. Good afternoon, Dr. Jewell, Mrs. Lyons, Mr. Kreeble, faculty, staff, and my fellow students. My name is Danielle Parchment, and throughout the course of my speech, I will be discussing the negative and positive impact that COVID-19 has had on my life, the adversities I have faced, and how they have shaped me into the confident young woman I am today. Before I start my speech, I want to give everyone a heads up that I'm going to keep my speech short and spicy. I'm going to keep it interesting, informative, and fun because I remember being in the fifth grade, sitting down with my peers during eighth grade speeches and being like, oh my God, when is this going to end? So I hope you all enjoy my speech, becoming Danielle Parchman. Since I was a baby, I've always been a social butterfly, one who was always eager to meet new people, make friends, and form new relationships and friendships. Having this personality always made it easy for me to meet and make new friends, but did not necessarily make it easy to form healthy relationships. Although this was a great trait for me to have, I would often ignore and invalidate my feelings in order to make friends. I first joined Buckley in the fifth grade at age nine. I was eager to make new friends and willing to do anything to try and fit in. I remember my fifth grade year being full of different experiences, emotions, friendships, subjects, and ways of life that I never experienced until I went to Buckley. For example, at my previous school, I was used to handwriting, my homework projects, and in-class assignments, while at Buckley, we used our Chromebooks for almost everything. I spent an unbelievable amount of time trying to learn the ways of our Chromebook, class software, and learning how to type fast in order to keep up with the class. By the time I ventured into my sixth grade year, I was acclimated to the environment and had a decent number of friends, but I felt like something was missing. I sometimes doubted myself, struggled with my confidence, and was too reliant on my friends to make me feel worthy. For the first time in my life, I, Danielle Parchment, struggled with who I was, who I was supposed to be, and my purpose in this world. Soon after that, COVID cases in New York City skyrocketed, and myself, the Buckley community, and the state of New York were forced into lockdown. COVID-19 alone has claimed the lives of over 900,000 United States citizens and has left the families of these victims heartbroken, angry, and devastated. My family was one of the many families who lost loved ones due to this pandemic. In my family, about four of my relatives died of COVID, one being from my dad's side and the other three being from my mom's. The death that impacted me the most was my uncle. With my only living grandparent living in Jamaica, my uncle was the closest person to a grandfather. My uncle's death left me feeling devastated, shocked, and depressed for the majority of the summer of 2020. My mother and father worried if they could ever get their happy little girl back, and my little sister always wondered why her big sister was so sad. I remember looking in the mirror and seeing the sad and lifeless reflection looking back at me. After that moment, I knew I had to better myself. I promised my uncle, my family, and myself 
that moving forward, I would work hard to be the best version of Danielle Parchment that I can be. I made three promises to myself, which I continue to abide by to this day. One, be confident in who I am as a person and what I can bring to the table. Two, love myself unconditionally. Three, refuse to have anyone demean me and tell me who I can and who I cannot be. With a new sense of strength, confidence, and advice, loving counsel from my parents, I went into my seventh grade year strong and proved to everyone what I can bring to the table. I plan to do the same for my eighth. When I first joined Buckley in the fifth and sixth grade, I was a scared and timid girl, but I am not that girl anymore. I am a confident young woman who knows her self-worth and refuses to have anyone put her down. I am happy in life because I have proven to myself that I can conquer any obstacle that life throws at me. I am happy because I am proud of who I am, which is the greatest gift that I could ever give my uncle. I am happy because I have shown the Buckley community who Danielle Parchman is and what she can bring to the table. As my fellow 8th grade peers and I prepare to depart from the Buckley community, I'd like to remind not only them, but the Buckley student body, that the act of self-love, self-confidence, and believing in yourself are all crucial components of one's personality that we as young people need as we progress as individuals in the world ahead of us. Self-love and self-confidence will grant you all the faith, determination, and independence needed to excel and break us from the shackles of human validation. As we venture into the next road of our journey, high school, I want to remind you all to always be the head and not the tail. To be the head always means to stand out from the crowd, hold a sense of exhilarating pride, and to always be a leader and never a follower. My gratitude to the Buckley community is entirely inexplicable. My obvious praise goes to the leadership and teachers of the Buckley community, but I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge others behind the scenes who do so much, yet we see so little of them. And to name a few, these are included, but are not limited to, Mrs. Maceo, Mrs. Chilianis, Mrs. Fortuna, Ms. John Paul, Mrs. Long, Mr. O, Mr. Hyacinth, and last but not least, my advisor, Mrs. Solosky. Overall, the Buckley experience, my teachers, my peers, and my family have all played a part in shaping who I am today and making me proud of being Danielle Parchment. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. You, you promised us that your speech was going to be spicy, and yes, uh, you, you didn't disappoint, so uh, thank you. But you know, first I wanted to, uh, to thank you um, and tell you how grateful I am that you reminded us uh, as we're starting to maybe um, start seeing the, end of the, light, the light at the end of the tunnel you know, with COVID that 900,000 uh, Americans have died of COVID, uh, over 5 million people in the world, and so as we you know, again, uh, hopefully move towards, uh, you know, brighter days and the end of this pandemic. Uh, it was good to be reminded that it's been uh, uh, very, uh, very painful for a lot of people, including your family. So we're very sorry for the losses that you've experienced to, uh, to COVID yourself and, and your family. So uh, thank you. You said uh, you, uh, you're looking for your purpose in life or you started, you know, to think about who you are and your purpose. Uh, I don't think you're fully discovered yet, but I can tell you it's going to be great. There's something great waiting there. <laughs> we don't know what it is yet, but, uh, You, you'll you'll find your purpose, and when you uh, you know when you discover it, I'm sure we'll all be aware and really looking forward to seeing you know what's uh, what's in store for what's in store for the the rest of your journey. Congratulations, Danielle. Well done. So let me uh, introduce your mom and your dad. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and your little sister, Gabby. <laughs> All right, this weekend, so Mr. Kreeble, I think there's a moratorium on homework in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade so that everybody can watch the Super Bowl on Sunday, right? All right, thank you. Uh, is that right, Mr. Kreeble? So. No homework due Monday, okay, in the, in the upper school. Uh, enjoy your snacks and, and the game. Uh, Monday is uh, Valentine's Day, so let's also have a special day where you can wear something red, something fun. It's not a dress down there, but wear a Valentine-themed uh, outfit, if you want, okay? In the meantime, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.